In this video, I will show you how to verify an identity uh, when you're dealing with double angle trig functions. I'm talking about cosine of 2x and sine of 2x. We will be referring back to these identities and using them. Um, so just watch out for this. Notice that cosine of 2 um, a has three different versions to it. So we have to choose carefully which version we're going to use. Now off camera I was sitting here trying to think about which one of these three versions of cosine 2 theta I want to use. And I couldn't decide. So I'm just going to pick the first one and see what happens. So uh, going with the first equation, cosine 2x is going to be uh, cosine squared minus sine squared. So let's see what happens when I do this. So I've got sine x and I've got 1 plus and I think I'll change colors just to make it clear. Um, so I'm doing cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Now when you're verifying an identity, you can only work on one side. So I am just going to continue working the left side until I get this expression. I cannot come over to this side and change it. Okay, so what now? I think we're going to need our Pythagorean identities now. Um, I'm looking at sine squared x, okay, and we know that um, based on our Pythagorean identities, sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So let's make that substitution. I think that's what needs to happen now. So if I replace, I'm replacing sine squared uh, with 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, now I'm going to really need to put this in parentheses. Uh, because of this negative sign. So I'm going to have the negative sign and then parentheses 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, that's what I have right now. So I'm just going to copy down the rest of what I have. So here I have cosine squared x. Okay, I'm just bringing that down. And then I have the rest of this out here, 1 plus all of this, and sine x is still hanging out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this minus sign right here. So uh, that's going to give me negative 1 plus cosine squared x when you distribute that negative sign. Okay, so in the meantime, I still have this cosine squared x. I still have 1 plus all of this, and I still have sine x out front. So now I'm looking for like terms and such, and I see that I've got this positive 1 and this negative 1. They are going to completely cancel each other out. Then I have cosine squared plus cosine squared that will be 2 cosine squared. Okay, so that's going to give me, uh, I think I'll just switch to blue now. So in here now I have 2 cosine squared x. Okay, and then I have the sine x out front. Okay, now, in my mind, I'm thinking about my target. I'm trying to get cosine x times sine 2x. All right? Now, if I want to get sine 2x, I better think about uh, the formula for sine 2x. I'm going to need 2 sine cosine. So as I look at this, I'm trying to see, can I get 2 sine cosine out of it? And I sure can. All right? Because you see I have sine x and I have uh, times 2 and then I have cosine squared but you know that that's cosine um, times an, an extra cosine. 
All right, so I have sine x and then I have two and I have cosine and I have another cosine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Um, but if I reorganize this and put the two in the front, all right, I'm just, um, just reversing these, then I have two sine x cosine x and then I have that extra cosine x. All right, but this is just what I was trying to get. Two sine x cosine x, um, that is sine of two x. So I can go ahead and make that substitution now. So this is sine of two x, and then I have this extra cosine x. Okay, and that is it. Okay, um, cosine x, sine 2x, I guess if I really want to just nail it, I'll just write it the other way and put the cosine x in front and then put my sine 2x last. But obviously this is the same as this and that was my target. All right, I don't know if that was the quickest way. Uh, that's just, I went ahead and picked the first uh, version of cosine I saw. I'm betting that if I had picked either one of the other two, it also would have worked out. Okay, how about number 15? I see that sine of 2x in the denominator, so I'm going to use that to work on the left side. So I have sine x over. Now the formula for sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So I have 2 sine x cosine x. Uh, well, the sine x's are going to cancel out, and that will give me 1 over 2 cosine x. Uh, well, that was easy. All right, how about number 16? Let's see, I see cosine 2x over there. So that makes me want to work on the right-hand side, maybe. Now, looking at the fact that um, in this version, there's a tangent, and I know tangent is sine over cosine, um, I'm going to use the version of cosine 2x that causes sine to appear. Then I'll have sine over cosine, and maybe I'll get a tangent out of it. So uh, cosine 2x, looking at the formulas, one version is 1 minus 2 sine squared. So that's the version I'm going to try using. So um, looking at the right-hand side, I've got 1 minus, and then I've got this cosine 2x. When you're going to substitute something and there's a, a minus sign in front of it, or a negative sign, you must use parentheses because um, that negative sign will have to be distributed. All right, so a big mistake is not using parentheses. So make sure if you've got a negative sign like this, you're going to need some parentheses when you make your substitution. Now I'm going to change colors to make this more obvious. So the cosine of 2x is 2... Oh, you know what? I had said I was going to use the version that involves the sine function. So this will be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. All right, now I've made that substitution. Now, as promised, I'm going to distribute this minus sign. It's like I'm multiplying everything by negative 1. So I'm going to bring down this 1, okay, and I might as well put my cosine x. Um, but negative 1 times 1 um, is... Uh, minus 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2 sine squared x. So I've got this now. Uh, now these are going to cancel each other out. 1 minus 1. So that's going to leave me with 2 sine squared x. Alright, and then I've got all of that is over my cosine x. Okay, now I'm looking for tangent squared x. 
But here's the thing. Uh, I've got sine over cosine, but right now it's sine squared, and in the denominator it's just a single cosine. If I want tangent squared, I'm going to need sine squared over cosine squared. So the only way I'm going to get cosine squared is if I multiply this by cosine. Um, now that's only going to be legal if I also multiply this by cosine. So I'm doing cosine over cosine. Okay, so I'm going to bring this whole operation upstairs. And let's see what we have now. So, okay, so right now I have 2 sine squared x uh, cosine x over cosine squared x. All right, so you can probably see um, somewhat where this is headed. So looking at my sine squared over cosine squared, that is tangent squared. Okay, so right now, what I have is 2 tangent squared x cosine x. All right, that is really, really close to what I had before. Um, now, what you can do, you can move any function to the other side of the de denominator, <laughs> of the other side of the fraction bar as long as you change uh, change it to the reciprocal function. So I can take this uh, cosine x and I can drop it down to the denominator um, but when it moves instead of cosine it's going to become secant. So this is going to become 2 tangent squared x over secant x. And that is what we were shooting for. All right, number 17. I see the cosine 2x on the right hand side, so that's the side I'm going to work on. So cosine 2x, again, is the one that has three different versions, so I have to carefully pick which one I want to try. Looking at the left hand side, I see tangent over there. So if I had um, sine over cosine, that's tangent. So that's why I'm going to pick the version that has sine in it. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so this right hand side will become 1 minus 2 sine squared x over cosine squared x. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this property. If I have um, a minus b over c, that's the same thing as a over c minus b over c. Okay? So doing that over here, I'm going to have 1 over cosine squared x. And then I'm going to have minus 2 sine squared x over cosine squared x. I did this because I see that I have a tangent squared happening and uh, this will give me my tangent squared to work with. Okay, so now I have 1 over cosine squared x minus 2 tangent squared x. Okay, let's try um, rewriting this fraction, of course, um, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, so this would be the same thing as secant squared x minus 2 tangent squared x. Now, we might need our Pythagorean uh, identities now. I know I've got this relationship between um, tangent and secant. So uh, secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So let's see if that does anything for us. So I'm going to take this secant squared, and I'm going to replace it with 1 plus tangent squared. Um, by the way, you need to have these memorized if you don't already. Um, so bringing down the rest of it, I have minus 
2 tangent squared x. Aha! I see what's happening, yeah. So um, 1 tangent squared minus 2 tangent squared is minus 1 tangent squared. Now, isn't this what we were trying to find? 1 minus tangent squared, and here I have 1 minus tangent squared. Kabam! Okay, that is how you do that. All right, let us attack number 18. I notice that the left side is the side with the double angle formula. So that is the side on which I will work. So I'm going to keep my cosine squared x, but sine 2x. All right, looking at the formula, that's going to be 2 sine x cosine x. So I'm going to have 2 sine x cosine x. OK. Now, I already see cotangent happening. I know that cotangent is cosine over sine. And I've already got that. Uh, just to make it more obvious, I will rewrite cosine squared as cosine x cosine x. OK, and then I've got 2 sine x cosine x. All right, so I've got my cosine over sine. Whoops, I forgot the s. All right, um, I'm noticing that these cosines are just going to cancel each other out anyway. So that's just going to give me cosine x over 2 sine x. But cosine over sine is cotangent. Uh, so that's the ball game. Um, this is indeed cotangent x over 2. Um, that's it. That's all there is to number 18. All right, last one. I see the double angle is here, cosine 2x. So I choose to work on the left side. Um, I have to decide, because it's cosine 2x, there are three versions of that. So I have to decide which version I'm going to choose. So looking at the other side, I see that sine is what is left over. So I, I'm going to pick the version that has sine in it and see how that works out. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So let's go. In the numerator, I have sine x. And in the denominator, I have 1 minus. OK, now here I'm going to do that substitution right here. Now, please be careful. When you do a substitution and you have a negative sign in front, you really need to use parentheses because that negative sign has to be distributed. Without the parentheses, the whole problem will become wrong. So um, this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now, once I distribute that minus sign, this is going to become plus. So I have sine x over 1. And this is going to become minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x. So um, 1 minus 1, those are going to cancel each other out. So that's going to leave me with sine x over 2 sine squared x. And then, of course, the sine x in the numerator is going to cancel out one of the two sine x's in the denominator. So that's going to leave us with our final answer of 1 over 2 sine x, uh, which was our target. All right, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.